Hello again and welcome back to The Front Row, a minor production of the First Congregational Church in South Pekin, where our intent is to bring snippets from our Sunday morning message into your week. We are talking about fasting as we continue our series on the discipline life. We are pulling out some of the spiritual disciplines from Richard Foster's book, Celebration of Discipline. And this week we happen to be on fasting, which... Uh, coincidentally or not, happens to be during the season of Lent heading into Easter. And Lent is a reflection of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert fasting. But our culture, by and large, not just within Christendom, but across the culture of our world, fasting is a foreign concept. Unfortunately, I believe it is also foreign within Christendom, within the church. We have just gotten so far away from it. Part of it is the, um, the cultural pattern that exists in our affluent society. We, we've gotten to this place in our world where we believe that if I don't have three squares a day and snacks in between and a bedtime snack before I go to bed, I'm starving. I'm being deprived. I am not living life, living my best life now. Uh, and that, that, of course, is a bit of a hyperbole, but it's not far from the truth. If we have to skip a meal for some reason, there's something wrong because we don't understand and appreciate this discipline of fasting. Now, if that's the case, well, why, why are we even talking about it? Well, I believe there should be a, a revitalization of the concept, particularly within Christendom. Now, there are areas outside of uh, uh, religious purposes and outside of the church, outside of Christendom, where fasting is seen in its benefit. I mean, uh, in the, the power arena of, of political power, there is the hunger strike. If you don't give me what I want, I'm just not going to eat and I'm going to draw attention to your, this particular cause and everybody's going to see it. It's going to be your fault that I'm not eating. Um, we can see it in the uh, the, the physical space, the health in industry, where they have acknowledged and there's medical evidence, there's anecdotal evidence that fasting is actually very, very good for our bodies. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, but in our constant state of eating and always needing to, to feel satiated and full, we are depriving our bodily systems of their full cycle. And when our our stomach is never empty, then it's not, our, our internal organs are not able to go through the healthy processes that they need to. So there's a physical benefit to fasting. But again, we're here to talk about the spiritual benefits of fasting. But why in the world would we do that? Why are we going there um, in this culture that is so anti? Very much against the concept of fasting for spiritual reasons. Again, going back to, uh, we're not the only religion that would embrace this, uh, this discipline. It is a proven methodology. That's what it is. Uh, our, our author talks about fasting being a means to an end. It, there, there are benefits in and of fasting in and of itself, but really fasting is a means to a productive end spiritually. Matter of fact, fasting will deepen your prayer life. Fasting will deepen your meditative life. Fasting will deepen your experience with God. It is a means to a deeper relationship with God, which is true for all of our disciplines, but fasting is actually a catalyst for all of them. So again, we're going to dip into three reasons why I believe fasting should be revived in our, in our world and in our lives Three of many, but I'm just going to pick three. But for now, I just want to leave you with that. Um, that uh, it, is, it is a proven methodology, and uh, I believe it should be revived within our relationship with God. To His glory and honor and blessing. Have a fantastic rest of your day. We'll talk again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.